Hey everybody, what is going on? My name is Raven and welcome back. Today is going to be another crime video. We are going to be talking about Ed Kemper or Edmund Emil Kemper III. For those of you that do not know who he is, he is a serial killer and a cannibal, a necrophiliac, and he forced himself onto his victims, which I'm not going to say the words. I think we all know the words by now. His nickname, one of his nicknames was the co-ed killer. Most of his victims were female college students. I'm going to describe a little bit about how he was and how his crimes kind of escalated. So when he was young, his parents divorced. He moved to Montana with his abusive mother, as he called her, before returning to California. He murdered his paternal grandparents when he was 15 years old. He was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia by court psychiatrists and sentenced to state hospital as a criminally insane juvenile. Released at the age of 21 after convincing psychiatrists he was rehabbed, Kemper was regarded as non-threatening by his future victims. He targeted young female hitchhikers during his killing spree, luring them into his vehicle, driving them to secluded areas where he would murder them and take their corpses back to his home to be decapitated, dismembered, and violated. Kemper then murdered his own mother and one of her friends before turning himself into authorities. He was found guilty at his trial in the year 1973. Kemper did request a death penalty for all of his crimes, but capital punishment was suspended in California at the time, and he instead received eight concurrent life sentences. Since then, he has been incarcerated in the California Medical Facility. Now, in an interview, he have actually explained kind of the last moments of his mother's life. You know, she was sitting in her bed reading a book. She noticed her son Kemper entered the room and said to him, I suppose you're going to want to sit up all night and talk now. Kemper replied, no good night. He waited for her to fall asleep. He then snuck back into her room to bludgeon her with a claw hammer and slit her throat with a pen knife. He then decapitated her and engaged in... Okay, I'm not going to say the word, but basically what it means is that he put his genitalia in, like, that area... So basically, he kind of did inappropriate things with her severed head. That is disgusting, by the way. And then he used her head as a dartboard. So he was just like throwing darts at her. Oh my lord. Then decided to scream at the severed head for an hour. And because that's really going to help anything at this point. He also, after that, decided to smash her face in just for good measure. He then hid her corpse in a closet and went to drink at a nearby bar. He was pretty well known at the bar, at the local bar. He was deemed as very nice, very respectful, all these things. And upon his return, he invited his mother's best friend over to the house to have dinner and watch a movie. But instead of that, he decided to strangle her to death to create a cover story saying that the two of them went away on vacation. He hid her body in a closet and left a note to police. And here's what the note said. It says approximately 5.15 a.m. on Saturday. No need for her to suffer any more at the hands of this horrible, murderous butcher, quote unquote. It was quick, asleep, the way I wanted it. Not sloppy and incomplete, gents. Just a lack of time. I got things to do. What does that even mean? After hearing on the news about the murders of his mother and her friend, he arrived in the area, he found a phone booth, and called the police. He confessed to the murders, but the police did not take his call seriously and told him to call back at a later time. Several hours later, he called again, asking to speak to an officer he personally knew. He confessed to that person, to that officer, that he killed his mother and her friend, that wanted the police to arrive and take him into custody. He also confessed to murdering of the six students that in that time span were went missing and were found, you know, completely not themselves, like body parts were found, things like that. So he basically cut them apart and it was very traumatic. Now, before I end today's video, I mean, I'm going to add one more thing. In a later interview, the person asked him why he turned himself in. And quote-unquote, this is literally what he said. 
The original purpose was gone. It wasn't serving any physical or real or emotional purpose. It was just a pure waste of time, emotionally. I couldn't handle it much longer. Toward the end there, I started feeling of the folly of the whole damn thing. And at the point of near exhaustion, near collapse, I just said to help with it and called it all off. Now, I don't really know for sure what that does mean, Maybe you guys do. Maybe someone that knows him could tell me what that means. But it sounds like he was just so tired of killing people. And, you know, maybe when he killed his grandparents, he shouldn't have been let out. Maybe he should have just stayed where he was. You know? But we will never know why all this occurred. We will never know how he was able to convince psychiatrists that he was fixed. Quote, unquote, fixed. We will never know why that happened. I do hope you guys liked today's video, and I'm sorry I haven't done any sort of crime videos in a while. I've been trying to find other stories, things I haven't talked about yet, and this was one of the ones that popped up. If you guys do ever want to see interviews with him, they are all over YouTube. I'm not going to copy and paste someone else's video. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to find my own way to explain things. And... Before I go, I'm going to explain some of the things with the trial really quick, and then I'm going to go. He did give a very detailed confession as to everything he did. His counsel's only option was to plead not guilty by reason of insanity to all the charges. Kemper twice tried to commit suicide in custody. And in 1973, that is when he had his trial began. Now, they did have him under truth serum at one point or another, which... I never heard of them doing that to prisoners, but maybe for certain ones they did. I don't know. He did explain under the truth serum that he did engage in cannibalism, alleging that he sliced flesh off his victims, cooked and consumed them as like a casserole, which, gross. It was also determined that he enjoyed the prospect of you know, being labeled a murderer. He did later recant the confession of cannibalism. So, was he really cannibal? Was he not? Who knows? No one knows except for him and his victims. So, in California at the time, during his trial, it was held, basically, um, he was put at a standard where it was establish the defense a defense on the ground of insanity it must be clearly proven that at the time of committing of the act the party accused was laboring under such a defect of reason from disease of mind from anything else and not know the nature and quality of the act he was doing or if he did know it that he did not know he was doing what was was wrong so kemper appeared to have known the nature of his acts was wrong he had shown signs of Maliceness. He took the stand. He testified that he killed the victims because he wanted them for myself, like possessions. That was his quote. And attempted to convince the jury he was insane based on the reasoning that his actions could have been committed only by someone with an aberrant mind. He said that the two beings inhabited his body and that when the killer persona took over, it was kind of like blacking out. He was deemed sane. And guilty on all counts. He asked for the death penalty. However, like I said earlier, they did not approve of the death penalty at that time frame. So, and quote unquote, I'm going to tell you this. Quote, he requested death by torture. Don't know what that means. I don't know if he means like the electric chair, which... The fact that someone would want death by torture and even say that in court is very interesting. All right, everybody, a little bit update as to where he is right now and things like that. And then I'm going to go. I know this is a long video. I did not expect it to be a long video. I do apologize. So he has tried to parole multiple times. In 1988, he was denied parole. In 1991, he was denied parole. 94 and 97, he was denied parole. Basically, he was denied parole almost every single time. And it kept going multiple years. 2007, he attended the next hearing, which is in 2007, where he was again denied parole. We don't care how much of a model prisoner he is because of the, the, ex, the extent of his crimes. In 2012 and 2017, he tried for parole again. 
denied. In 2024, so 2024 is going to be the next time he is eligible for parole. You guys, we do not need murderers out on the streets. And he has said himself that he wants to die. I think, you know, obviously, I'm not going to say either way as of this case. I think he knows what he wants at this point. I don't think he should be let out, though. I think that the last time he was let out, he murdered eight more people, at the very least. I don't think he should be let out again. And I'm not saying that just because of the fact that he's in prison right now. It's just the fact that he murdered multiple, multiple people. You know, that's, to me, that's enough. I do hope you all enjoyed today's video. And I did try to make sure that I wasn't too annoying. I just stuck with the facts instead of just going all over the place. So if you found this video long and like I was dreading it on, I was just following it based on the information I have. I do hope you guys liked today's video. If you did, please be sure to hit the like button before you go. Also, there's a subscribe button. Please be sure to hit that and the notification bell so you guys know every single time I upload, which is almost every single day of the week. You guys get a lot of content from me, you guys, and gals, and everyone. I do a lot of different content. I do crime videos like this one and all the others I've done. I play video games just because it's fun. I will see you all next time. Bye.